Hello, you're very welcome to our Beyond the Binary panel, um, where we're going to be chatting about all things gender and non-binary, no, no to the binary, <laughs> as well as non-binary um, stuff. My name is Claire. I use she, they pronouns, um, and I'm going to host, I guess. Um, so yeah, so I might go over to Shara next, introduce yourself. Yeah, sure. Uh, hi folks, uh, my name is Shara, my pronouns are they, them, and I am very much a, a baby MB, <laughs> uh, kind of slowly kind of coming out over the last year um, and having the strangeness of kind of coming out again and people being very confused and all, all that good stuff. So looking forward to our discussion. Can I go? Yeah. Her. Um, hi, I I don't know my name. Uh, no, I'm kidding. It's fine. Um, placeholder has been Salmon. Um, you know, and uh, my pronouns are he, they. And yeah, I've been continuously thinking about gender for a while now. Um, and it's been good. It's been positive kind of experience for me. So. Awesome. Um, hi, my name's Leon and I use they them pronouns. Um, I have been out as non-binary for a few years now, um, but I still don't know anything about gender. Um, if anyone figures it out, please let us know. <laughs> yes, absolutely welcome any and all wisdom in the comments <laughs> of anyone that's watching. Um, but yeah, I guess, let me glance down. Um, let's start with a fun one. Um, is there a favorite TV show or character that you really connect with? And if not, what would you like to see? So maybe Leon first? I do actually have a thought. Um, <laughs> It is hard. I don't feel like there's enough representation in media. We could go on about that for a long time. But one that's very good is um, One Day at a Time and Sid. They're a non-binary character and they're pretty awesome. Love that show. Solid show. Need to watch it again. But yeah, I agree about the, the lack of representation. But yeah. <laughs> um, anyone like to go next? It's hard to think of anyone, honestly. Like yeah. Leon said, there's such a lack of... It's kind of like you get like non-binary characters and trans characters on screen, but they're so limited and they're usually small characters and they're not very well developed as a character and a backstory, so you can't really get that invested in them. Um, and also, I think because trans experiences are so different from each other, it can be difficult as well to see you can't just see yourself in any non-binary or trans character on screen either which is tricky yeah a hundred percent um and like so often in media like the tiny handful of trans and non-binary characters they're often non-human characters and like I, depending on the storytelling it's usually fine to kind of relate with non-humans but like it can be a bit tiring to always be like, oh, okay, so we're not people. That's nice. Thanks. Thanks for that. Feeling great. <laughs> um, but yeah, I can't think of any representation off the top of my head. But if I, uh, I know that there was that cartoon with the baby Muppets a couple of weeks ago that had Gonzo in a dress. And I was just like, that's my gender. I am Gonzo in a dress. <laughs> Yeah, and often um, if it is in a TV show, recently I've been watching Marvel TV shows and it's just a throwaway thing. Like it's, yeah. it, you know, it, it's like it gets the queer people interested, but doesn't annoy the straight people who might have an issue with it. And that, that can be very frustrating. Um, mm. But also She-Ra um, is a, 
TV show. I, I, it doesn't have great representation, but again, see, we have to like clutch at whatever we have, really. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or even like sometimes instead of identifying specifically with characters who are trans or non-binary, it's more like characters who do gender in a different way, even if they're presented as like cis straight characters, but you're just like, there's what um and sometimes it's like that as well because the industry doesn't want to take risks and go all out there and show trans and non-binary characters so which isn't i mean we do we do with what we can you know mm -hmm. i know 100 percent. like and i think even just from like us growing up like the somewhat alternative character would kind of be loosely queer coded or loosely trans coded just because it's like oh they're different from the norm and you you have to dig for that representation and interpret it and yeah there might have been one or two queer people in the writing room maybe who knew that but so often it's accidental that's so true they like write a character that's like a bit different and a little like alternative and it'll yeah have so much like queer culture just built into it or yeah wrapped around yeah i really liked that point i think it was shared at medit about like the um non-human characters like yeah like i'm not always a lizard like sometimes yes i am but i mean <laughs> Like, not always. Um, or a seahorse or whatever other cliches there are around. But sometimes, yes, but yeah, it is exhausting a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's so much to go on there. Um, oh, yeah. First on, well, this might be a bit of a reach, um, about Gonzo in a dress. Um, I saw that through TikTok. And I feel like my next question is, have you found lockdown better or worse to come out in slash just exist as a queer person? Um, because I found, I've really, meant to myself as a queer person um and something like tiktok just and on one hand i'm seeing the muppet babies but on the other hand i'm seeing just such a wide range of human beings all around um but yeah so have have you found it kind of better or worse or different or i'm not sure yeah how to phrase it exactly yeah I jump in. Um, from coming out myself over lockdown, like it is, it's like you can nearly put yourself in such a bubble because um, I find with like online spaces, it's so much more culturally acceptable to be very choosy about the spaces you interact with. So most of the people I see day in, day out are queer spaces. Like I, I work remotely. I'm out at work. So like when I'm in a lot of online spaces, like my pronouns, I, I don't have to worry about people respecting my identity. Uh, and I got a very big reality check about that a couple of weeks ago where I was going to, um, I had to go on the train to like go to a hospital appointment and my i was bringing my bike with me and people kept trying to put their suitcases in front of uh my the bike rack on the train station and i was like oh hey sorry um do you mind not putting your suitcase there i'm getting off at the next stop i won't be able to get my bike out otherwise and then the staff would come along and they'd be like oh that lady said that and that lady said this and thank you ma'am and thank you miss and i was just like ooh oh I didn't realize how uncomfortable I was with that sort of stuff because like like my, my slight secret is I'm, I'm kind of a, th a they she but I find for the cishets I'm like if I say they them I'll I'll get they <laughs> and then like for you know the few times that people might mess up or I'm out and about in public it kind of 
makes me skip over that discomfort. But yeah, that was quite the reality check of outside of my lovely queer bubble. Yeah, yeah, I <laughs> relate hard to that. But yeah, outside of, mm-hmm. yeah, the bubble, which is so, so special and so needed and so like nurturing. But then, yeah, also when, when reality pops, it can be quite a stark reminder. Yeah, I think it's um, it's really interesting because I think for a lot of people that I've spoken to, it's been the first time that we've really had to like slow down in our lives. Um, when as a community as well, we can be like very fast paced and hard workers and go, go, go. What's the next thing? Um, and that was very much where I was at and where a lot of my friends were at. Um, and suddenly having to stop for so long and to spend so much time with yourself by yourself as well like I moved back to my home house where I am now with my parents for the first like five months of lockdown um so that in itself is an experience after being away for like five years um and coming back to where you grew up and being on your own for so much time like that will force you to think anyway you know, and the amount of people who have learned new things about themselves, whether it's to do with gender and sexuality or anything else, to be honest, or actually what you really want and are actually really interested in suddenly becomes way more apparent when you don't have all this other distraction going on. Um, And that was very much what the experience was for me, where I was like, if I took myself out of the context of my really busy life that I had before, who was I outside of that? And it was you know, I never would have had that opportunity to take that time to spend with myself and on myself, um, if not for the pandemic. So a a part of me is really thankful for the time that I had with myself and the rest of me hates it, (laughs) but that tiny part is thankful. Yeah, no, you said that, that's brilliantly said. Um, I don't know how I'm going to follow that up, but yeah, um, I I also had to move home for a little while during the pandemic um, and that was actually the opposite. I had to closet nearly. Um, so that that is a really interesting experience as well. And luckily I wasn't there for very long, um, but I I understand that unfortunately for some people it, it, it was very isolating um, or they couldn't be as out or as in as involved in queer spaces because there's not as many queer spaces i know a lot have moved online but um it's not quite the same but in in my personal experience as well i have gotten more comfortable with my gender with the time yeah to kind of think about yeah who who i am and what am i comfortable wearing and what why am i wearing it who am i wearing it for and like making sure that it's for me and um yeah no so again yeah the time has been good and terrible but yeah (laughs) exactly yeah and the amount of people actually that i've heard who who say did things like always wore makeup every day and were like no i do this for myself i really enjoy it and then lockdown happened and they were like actually i don't (laughs) i do this for other people because when i'm on my own for six months I don't do any of this this stuff and like what do I actually prefer wearing and looking like and and per, and being perceived as and so that changes as well. Mm. No I, I completely agree and like even just on a personal level like on that like I, I found that I didn't have a lot of comfortable clothes which I didn't realize until I was in lockdown and doing nothing but sitting around my house and I was like I don't have a lot of like just things that are about what's the most comfortable to sit around in. Like I had a few bits that I would wear when I was working, but like I had kind of been in the habit of, 
you know, to get myself out of the house. So I would leave the house sometimes, like I would work maybe in my PJs uh, and a dressing gown. But when work finished, I'd get dressed and I'd go outside and I'd do my errands or see people. But when you couldn't really do that, that's when I was like, why don't I own comfortable clothes? What the heck? (laughs) Um, And then like... (laughs) I don't know, like I also spent a lot of lockdown sick. So it was like, I definitely need more comfortable clothes. And it kind of changed so much about like how I interact with the world and kind of less of that, what I wanted to look like and more like, how do I want to feel? Absolutely. I feel like it. Yeah, I feel like a few weeks into lockdown I remember I think I went to Aldi for the first time in tracksuit or leggings or yeah I think it was tracksuit but yeah I think I only owned one tracksuit at the time and it would like just be for around the house and I feel like I'd noticed that that wasn't just me that people that were going to Aldi or going, you know, out of the house to do little chores or errands or whatever, they would, you know, it was completely acceptable to wear your comfy clothes because everyone was dealing with a lot. And if the best you can do is make yourself feel somewhat more physically comfortable, then, then yeah, nobody cares. Like, people cheered you on for it were like yeah where are your most comfortable things like but yeah so it's yeah very interesting and then yeah that that point that you met Leon of what am I wearing and like do I want to wear it who am I wearing it for like if I had like if I was going to an event that was completely like a vacuum that it was only the people that I loved or whatever like what would I wear if I knew nobody would blink twice or if I knew nobody would judge me for it and it's yeah it's um eye-opening but also expensive (laughs) which is yeah you're if you're like coming into your own or discovering a new style or discovering the clothes you have maybe don't fit you as much as you thought they did Mm. Um, yeah and then we had to deal with that while all the charity shops were closed I mean what were we meant to do (laughs) such cruelty (laughs) terrible yeah oh god yeah all I wanted to do was like go to the men's sections in charity shops and buy nice big shirts and jackets and whatnot and yeah (laughs) wasn't an option yeah like I I did a little bit of deep hopping last summer but Mm. like being a plus size person that doesn't really work (laughs) um or like you're you're picking up bits that are advertised as oversized and you're like this is my size that's not very nice um but I did get a few quite nice like vintage shirts and things like that that um I absolutely love so it helps fill that void but yeah I missed browsing charity shops so much um yeah okay let me see um mm. yeah i often um made you see I, I did come out before the pandemic and i just made loads of trans friends and lots of clothes swaps and trying on different clothes that was how i h- hacked my way around the expensive side of things but yeah charity shops and yeah 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 um yeah i guess on that is there anything you'd like to share with folks who are just starting to question their gender or like just yeah just starting their journey 
Um, I think I think one of the biggest things that really helped me is even if you don't have it figured out, check in with your local trans space or your local non-binary space. Like not all of them have transitioned online, but a lot of them have. And uh, like I'm dating a trans person. So it was a lot easier for me to kind of get over that. Am I enough to enter this space? Um, but like I've never dealt with any kind of judgment for not figuring out what label to use or like coming in and like having slightly different pronouns every time I came in. Like there was no like kind of like, well, what are you doing? Because I think there it was really cool about in the last a couple of years ago to like laugh at non-binary people while being like, I'm a trans ally. I'm here for these real trans people. And I think I internalized so much of that without even realizing. And like, I would hold myself to such a standard that I would never hold another trans or non-binary person to where it's like, Oh, I'm the real faker in the room. Nobody else is. I take everyone's like gender or name or pronouns. Like I'll never question it. Um, but if it's me, it's like, oh, I'm the faker. So that would be my biggest thing. Like, because it can feel like it's like, oh my God, like this is going to be really scary. What if I don't know a label? What if I don't know a name? Like almost everyone in that room is going to have been in that position you're in right now. And look, if it turns out after you're questioning for a while that you are actually cis, there's absolutely nothing wrong with questioning and pop it in for a little bit of support while you're questioning. So that would be my big recommendation um, that I learned from my own experience and from talking with my partner who's like been in trans spaces for years where it's just like, it's okay to kind of just show up for a couple of sessions and then be like, you know what, maybe this isn't me or, do you know, can I try this name this month? Or like, there's so much compassion there within the community. That's so lovely. That is, yeah, heartwarming. Yeah, yeah, very heartwarming. I think, um, that's a really good point and finding about like finding compassion through other trans people um is so helpful i think the thing that i struggled with the most was giving myself permission um i was stopping myself so often um in taking like any sort of baby step forward um and not really consciously knowing why for a long time um and it was it was feeling like oh i'm not allowed to do that that feels like it's taking it just that step too far so i'm no um so yeah i think uh, being allowing myself um that space and for, forgiving myself in advance for making any mistakes or for needing to change things and it's okay to you know take a step forward and you can always take a step back if it feels like too much um, it doesn't have to be a constant journey. It, it's going to be a bit messier than that, most likely. <laughs> um, but that's okay, because we've all been through it, we know. Um, yeah. Awesome. Hey, uh, someone's blasting music outside in, uh, in their car, so sorry if you can hear that. Um, but yeah, um, the... You're, yeah you're not alone and it's uh, yeah experiment there's no right or wrong way of being trans there's no right or wrong way of figuring out your gender um yeah reaching out to other um trans and non-binary people um has was a huge support for me um and yeah just yeah, do what feels right with, for you and um, you can experiment and you can go back or forward. It's not a linear process at all. Um, but yeah, just try, have fun while you're doing it. And if you figure out gender, let us know. Um, I'm, still, I'm still figuring it out and I've been out for years. So like, yeah. there's no rush or anything like that. Yeah. 
It's like, an- answers on a postcard, please. What is gender? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes, please. Yeah, I think there's... Um... Ooh, sugar. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh. But yeah. Oh yeah, there's no right way, as you were saying, Leon. There's no whatever, like... Because we can all have preconceived ideas of what a trans person looks like or acts like or dresses like or I don't know but like that doesn't exist it doesn't Mm. like there's no there's no um yeah set way and um yeah and the same for non-binary too and yeah it's if that's what you identify with, if that's what you are and you don't need to prove it or you don't need to, yeah, alter yourself in any way to make it feel like you fit that better or to make you feel like it, it's more correct or whatever, just... Yeah, as I say all this, I'm like, yes, Claire, listen to yourself now. Listen, <laughs> yeah, now, as you're saying it. <laughs> oh no, it is. It is like kind. Of, we can be our own worst enemies with that, um, and like. <laughs> Even with my other main recommendation would be like make lots of trans friends and non-binary friends, um, because without meaning to almost my whole friend circle are like trans and non-binary like a good three quarters anyway and that made coming out so much easier but I know like if you're not as involved in the community or maybe you don't live in as much of an urban place that could be a lot more difficult but even in like the few months kind of before I kind of started talking to people about it and I was just internalizing it I started like joining subreddits, joining Facebook groups, because there's lots of spaces where you can kind of have that check in with the community, but in a much more like subtle way, or you don't have to be like, you know, live in a city where there's loads of gays and figure out the trans and non-binary people in the pool of gays. (laughs) Like that isn't possible for everyone. And I think sometimes people get really intimidated being like oh I don't know any trans people like I don't even know where to start um but like there's support there's so many supports and people are always looking for new friends no matter what your age yeah and even just the yeah simplest thing like the Facebook groups or remember last year it was part Partly because I was sick of the Instagram I had that I had had since I was whatever, 17 or 18. And it like had my Debs photos on it. And I followed everyone from school on it. And I was just a very different part of my life. Um, And I think, yeah, initially it was started so that I could be a bit realer about my mental health and my health and how that was doing and try and follow those circles but it also evolved into following more queer people um and then yeah it was like months and months later before i got up the courage to connect that with like my friends in real life um and even then i don't use it very often now but it's it's I suppose, I don't know if a fresh start covers it, but that there are avenues there that you can enter into a community without having to announce it, without having to let anyone else know, without having to... And like that, that's actually a really good way to, like, try out a new name or try out other pronouns or try out... Yeah, where it's not tied to I don't know your real life isn't the right phrase but not tied to the life you are living now or like the jobs you have right now or the people you know but um, yeah 
Oh, very useful. Yeah, definitely. I agree about the the getting trans friends because it helps. It also helps hugely in that, like, as you were saying, Shara, you would never, you would never not accept someone else. Yeah. Like, and it's that idea of like, oh, well, if your friend was feeling this way, what would you do? But like, but trans. <laughs> um but yeah and the yeah and that the struggles are very relatable they're very yeah. universal to people that aren't cis um yeah even if it feels very it can feel very lonely and very isolating um yeah to meet people or yeah try and find some people where they remind you that it's not super isolating or like you're not completely lonely or alone in it um yeah I'm sure the internet is great <laughs> yeah i think as well like i i love like i love gender memes <laughs> I think like the memes their community makes are also very good. And I think that was nearly one of the first clues for me. <laughs> I was like, mm, I'm enjoying these memes a bit too much. <laughs> yeah, they're like hitting just slightly, slightly too close to home. Sorry, what? Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah speaking of tiktok has has yeah been very much one of those things that because it just it is one of those internet algorithms that shows you things that you didn't even realize were interested or you knew you were interested but you didn't have to go and search for it was just like here's this thing you like or here's this thing that you feel and you're like, oh, I feel, I do feel that actually, actually, I do, I do feel that quite a bit. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, I suppose I could go on to, I suppose, the idea of a second coming out or coming out coming out as a, with sexuality as opposed to gender. Sorry, that was a, wasn't a very smooth sentence. But All good. Yeah, if you had, I don't know, if you found differences, if you even had a coming out, if you, I don't know. Yeah, because they're very, they're very different things, sexuality and gender, so. They're, and they're perceived completely differently and yeah that sort of thing um, anyone want to jump on that phone one <laughs> um i know i keep talking i'm sorry <laughs> it's like shout at me to be quiet if needs be um like i know myself i i found it really strange because I felt like, but like, like I first like started coming out in 2008, 2009 as bi. And like the LGBT community in Ireland was still very much like, oh, we don't know about those bi's. Why can't, like, this is a gay space. And like, you know, you might know one trans person who was like openly trans. And it was like such a weird space. But like, I very much kind of fought my corner and was like, no, I'm bisexual and I deserve to be here. And I'm going to, I said, if you don't want me here, then I'm going to build the space I want in the middle of your space. So there. <laughs> um, and like, I don't know, from doing different things with Bi Ireland, with Pride, with different organizations uh, I'm involved in, I kind of got known as like local gay. <laughs> Um, and then kind of going, oh, actually, that's that's not all. 
<laughs> but I feel like um, I don't know. I think my workplace is like because that's the majority of the you know allos is het people I deal with is through my workplace. And I was always a very loud trans ally uh, to the point that then I had loads of co-workers be like, oh, what are your pronouns? Like, how do you identify for like years before I ever kind of admitted to myself that there was something there? So, you know, I'm I'm living proof of the like loud trans ally to trans pipeline. <laughs> Yeah, can be a very real timeline. All right. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, I think um, it is. I don't know. I suppose there is probably a bit more fear around um, coming out when it's to do with gender. It's like this strange perception that like there's a really big difference or something, um, like societally. Um, I think we've gotten to a more comfortable place with sexuality and sexual orientation and romantic orientation. Um, and then not so much with gender yet, but I suppose it's, I see them as very connected things um, and they feel connected for me personally, but it also society, I see them as like very connected, like in, in being queer in your sexuality, you are already defying gender norms and stereotypes in anything ever anyway so it's really not that different either way we're sticking the middle finger up to gender and what it should be and what it means traditionally whether it's sexuality or gender coming out it's kind of all in the same ballpark of we're not doing that we're doing this instead <laughs> kind of a thing yeah. um but yeah i also related to what Shara was saying about kind of building up this identity around this label and then <laughs> growing out of it and thinking uh, like shit because <laughs> um, yeah. sometimes it's very tied in with your maybe your friend group your career your god knows what you know um, hobbies support groups so many other things so then it's like well I don't really feel I don't belong in a women's group anymore but all my friends are in the women's group so I can't do that anymore and then it's like okay I'm going to a new group that's cool but this it's this weird sense of like I guess it's because of how the divisions are in the community um and it's understandable that those are specific spaces in groups and that's great but when you're moving in and out between them it feels very strange because it's like a weird loss um of one kind of version of you and the gaining of another um and also it's like how do you how do I keep people around me up to date with where I'm at when my friends associate me with going to the women's group or going to the trans group or whatever it is um so that's interesting too to navigate and I I mean I think that's because more of how everything is structured in the community with like having our segregated groups and meets and stuff. And there's a place and a time for that. But then I think there's more of an important place and a time um, for everyone because it allows the crossovers to happen much more smoothly as well. Um, yeah. I don't know if any of that made sense. <laughs> oh, it really does. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that made lots of sense. Um, I don't think coming out is ever a easy thing to do. It can be easier with the the people around you and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, it it feels. Yeah, I'm gonna go about it a different way. When I came out as um, queer in the beginning or bi or I don't even know what I came out as originally and so many labels I've gone through um, it, it did feel good to like be out but when I kind of figured out my gender a little bit more um, to like come out with my gender it felt I felt so much more authentic and just like um, yeah I felt more like myself and um, and 
yeah, it, it's they're hard to compare um, coming out sexuality, and yeah, because it is it's all one pipeline, or you know, um, it's all very connected. But yeah, um, coming out is scary, but good. I don't know. <laughs> not, not one message. <laughs> Yeah, like, and, and like, there's something about gender that it's like, it's so personal, yet so public. Because like, and like you said, um, about like the, when you were kind of used to women's spaces, and now you're like, well, I'm not a woman, but that was a place I felt safe or felt comfortable, and kind of having complicated feelings, but at the same time, recognizing that, um, unless a place is maybe saying women and non-binary people, it's like, okay, do you actually mean women and non-binary people or do you mean women and AFAB non-binary people that I see as women light? Because I have been in some, like, in some actual, like, non-binary people of all shapes and sizes and women, and those spaces have been great, but I think there can be a lot of baggage around that when it's like, what do you mean by women and non-binary people? Because I think people mean so well. Uh, and it's like, it just misses the mark sometimes unless you're like explicitly clear. Yeah, that phrase is always a a tricky one. Yeah. And it's, yeah. And then it, it yeah, the point you made about about um yeah the different spaces and the different the yeah how there's a time and a place for those spaces um but yeah how sometimes that can yeah make a bigger deal out of little changes or make them feel a little bigger than they're already scary to make those changes, especially in a social like context. So, um, yeah, and then also the point about the gender as a whole, I feel like anyway, personally, is, is not that different at all. Like this idea that boys and girls are completely different, like it just, it, yeah, no, I'm, I've gotten to this stage in my whatever gender journey or education or whatever that I just can't, can't really listen to that quietly. I can't, like, I have to have some sort of rebuttal that's like, mm, actually, not, not that I found not hugely or that there doesn't have to be. There can be, but that there doesn't it's not necessarily a universal truth. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, and the just the title non-binary for me feels like it fits because it's just like just looking at the the words itself, non-binary, like just not fitting with the binary. And it, it, yeah, can mean different things to different people, given backgrounds or what they've learned about it in other circumstances. But yeah, yeah. I feel like um, a lot of people say a lot, like put a lot of restrictions or rules on what it is to be non-binary like you have to be like this you can't be like that you must do this you can't do that you have to give up your whole gender and you can't have any of that old stuff but it, it's very good to point out what the word actually is just not binary like non-binary it's that simple um and if you fall in under there there's it's just like a sea of um, gender identities or uh, like different identities and yeah but it is kind of a comforting um, label because it is kind of I, I don't know how to pin down my gender gender fluid this that or the other I'm not sure um, but non-binary and queer they're good words 
um, mm-hmm. for me personally. But yeah. And that's a good, yeah, a, a good point to make about all the labels that can fall under non-binary or indeed trans. Um, like, yeah, non-binary can be under the trans umbrella because trans is just not cisgendered. It's just trans just means that you don't align with whatever was on your birth cert or whatever you were given that birth but yeah that can be quite a fun fun scary interesting activity to look into all those different labels um under under transness it can be yeah really enlightening a little overwhelming um so do it in little small chunks if you want or little small installments um but yeah, some would say I haven't found one other than non-binary yet that fits particularly better or more. I think I'm still just in the process of getting to know myself and settling into myself. Um, but yeah, some people can really, um, yeah, really find specific ones comforting and indeed pronouns too. Um, yeah, like on the panel, there's a mix of he days and they thems and she days, and they're all quite. Um, I don't know. They're not neo pronouns. I don't think they call, call under fall under neo pronouns. So that's a whole extra thing that you can look into. Mm. Pronouns or something that you're exploring yeah. yeah I think there's there's kind of a lot more kind of grow or kind of love or space in the community for kind of exploring those like neo pronouns or micro labels or whatnot because like I, I'm still trying to figure it all out uh, I feel maybe a gender mostly because I I get so like personally icked out when people are like trans masculine and trans feminine like which one do you fit into and I'm like ew no go away (laughs) um but like I think one of the most comforting things I found is how playful so many people in the community kind of can be with their gender and like you'll see it with like people on social media like being like the gender of the day is um and all of these other kind of fun things where it's like okay we haven't really figured it out but we're also being very fun and playful about it and I think I really I really relate with that where it's just like no no gender just vibes it's all good (laughs) yeah take some of the heaviness out of it I suppose but yeah I um yeah so we might finish up soon i'm gonna mention some resources and then i might come to you for like closing remarks or any last bits you want to say something like that um so here in galway we have uh, an amazing lgbt plus group called the mock and they have a trans non-binary group called Gossip, which meets every second Saturday. Um, well, usually the first and the third Saturday of the month. So sometimes there's a fifth Saturday and we all lose our minds and it's, you know. <laughs> um, and then Amak also have a drop-in, which is just a general LGBTI plus uh, drop-in every Saturday two to four usually um then there's tenny which is uh like ireland a national that's the word a national um organization there's shout which is kind of based towards more younger ones i think they go up to 21 kind of with the people they work with um and then after this panel if you would like, if you're interested, at 6 p.m., um, there is a trans non-binary safe space. 
So you can send a message to our Galway Community Pride Facebook page and we'll send you back the link. This is going to be a nice, safe, closed space. Um, yeah, so that's at six. Um, but yeah, so Cheryl, would you like to sure um i don't know i was too busy listening to think of closing remarks <laughs> um but i guess for anyone out there you are trans enough you are non-binary enough it's okay to not know it's okay to change it's okay to fluctuate and i cannot recommend like there's so many good resources or books or whatnot but I think the, the best resource I've had is just having kind of being linked in with local trans and non-binary people and having friends that are trans and non-binary. So that would be my biggest recommendation to link in with your local community because uh, they'd only be delighted to have you. Alan, do you want to go next? Uh, I will. Um, yeah, uh, surround yourself with supportive people um, and give yourself permission to explore who you are. Um, you owe it to yourself. It's your life, no one else's. Um, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> yeah, um, you're not alone. Um, it can feel like a lonely process sometimes. Um, but yeah, getting a good support network and stuff like that, reaching out, um, and yeah, question. And also if someone does come to you, um, if someone reaches out to you um, to be respectful and patient and stuff like that. And also be patient with yourself because it, it takes a while to figure out. Again, it's been years for me personally, but sure, look, it's all good. Lovely. Thank you so much to our three panelists. And yeah, this has been Beyond the Binary panel for Pride. Um, yeah, hopefully see you in our safe space at six if you fall under the category and enjoy our Pride Week. Bye. <laughs>